Walker Field in Greeley. It's the 3A state tournaments as the Brush Bee Diggers take on the Valley Vikings in an elimination game. I'm John Beltran as these teams are meeting for the third time this season, of course, being Patriot League foes on March 17th in Brush. Valley defeated Brush 21-10. to And then two days later from Bigfoot Turf Farms, the Bee Diggers outscored Valley 22-10. to Here's how both of these teams got to this point of the state tournament. On Friday, the Bee Diggers won in 10 innings over Peak to Peak, 3 to 2. On Arnoldo Matos Garcia's RBI singles, Brush was down 2 to 1 in the eighth inning. Kyle Rosenbrock tied it with a two strike, two out double, scoring BJ Hirschfeld. And then the Bee Diggers on Friday would lose to Eaton by a score of 2 0 as the Bee Diggers were held to one hit. As for Valley, they played a slugfest against Sterling at Frederick High School. On Friday, and Sterling won the game by a score of 12 to nine in nine innings. And then earlier today, here at Butch Butler Field in Greeley, Carter Chacon went the distance for Valley as they eliminated Bayfield two to nothing. So Bayfield becomes the first of four teams to be eliminated today. You'll have one team eliminated here, and then right now Gunnison and Peak to Peak are playing from Frederick High School. Later on, Sterling will play the winner of that game, scheduled for 12:30 on 105.7 KPMX as well as kpmx.com. The Beat Diggers are the designated home team for this particular game. So momentarily we'll have the uh, starting lineup for you for the Beat Diggers. Actually for the Vikings first since the Beat Diggers will be on the field first. Valley coached by Steve Kissler, who I understand was ejected from the previous game. So I'm not sure about his status for this game. The B-Diggers coached by Kevin Fergus. The Valley starting lineup will have Ty Hanslick, the second baseman, batting first. The shortstop, Cesar Mercado, hits second. Catcher Peyton Chacon is the third hitter. Carter Chacon, the third base cleanup, batting fifth, is the first baseman, Avery Hanslick. Sean Chacon, the pitcher, at sixth. Batting seventh is the right fielder, Riley Diedrich. Jose Mercado, the left fielder, hits eighth. And the designated hitter, Tylan Nash, will be batting ninth. For the B Diggers defensively, once they take the field, they'll have B.J. Hirschfeld at first, Matos Garcia at second, Mikey Gutierrez at third, and between them at short is Kyle Rosenbrock. Around the outfield, Grayson Simmons will be in left. The center fielder is Zane Fowl, Brandon Walter in right. Behind the plate, Alec Peterson. And Nico Guzman, who was outstanding, will be on the mound. He threw seven very effective innings. Actually, six effective innings before the rains came. On Friday, in that 3-2 to 10 inning victory over Peak to Peak, and of course, B.J. Hirschfeld took over after that. And he was able to close out the game, even though he did allow a run. And Guzman, in his last two outings, has been outstanding. He shut down Denver Signs and Tex Stapleton, retiring all 12 hitters, striking out nine. And then, of course, what he did on Friday was terrific against Peak to Peak, just holding them to one run. And at one point, retiring nine in a row. The Big Diggers are dressed, of course, in their... Maroon uniforms with the gray pants. Valley in their black uniforms with the white pants and the gold outline with the numerals and the lettering. So one thing is for sure, one Patriot League team will be eliminated today. By the time we get to Friday, we could have four Patriot League teams still alive. Obviously, you have one from here. Eaton is already in the winner's bracket. University. Also in the winner's bracket, Eaton will play University coming up at 1 o'clock or a little bit thereafter. And then if Sterling can win against the winner of that Gunnison peak-to-peak game, they would also qualify for the Final Four. But, of course, the winner of the 1 o'clock game will be in the driver's seat as the B-Diggers were three years ago, although they did not win the state title. The winner of the... One o'clock game automatically qualifies for the state championship game, regardless of what they do on Friday. So the B-Diggers got to come out here offensively because they generated just one hit against Eaton pitching 
and three runs in ten innings against Peak to Peak. Now, those were against some great pitchers, Nick Cavecas of Peak to Peak. And, of course, they faced uh, Dalton Lind and Lane Griman of Eaton. But that's over a 17-inning stretch where they tally just three runs. They should have much more success here against this Valley team, which just got an outstanding performance from Carter Chacon. And who knows, if Valley's in a position to close the game, Chacon could certainly be on the hill. But it'll be Sean Chacon starting for Valley here this morning. And you can tell pretty early how well Nico Guzman is going to do. We know one thing, he feels very comfortable with that mound. Sean Chacon has not been on the mound, but Nico Guzman pitched off this mound. And he's probably going to be limited to 45 to 60 pitches because of the activity that he had on uh, Friday. Let's see. We'll try to uh, look for the breakdown of exactly how many pitches Nico Guzman threw against peak to peak and give you that official line for the senior right-hander. As Guzman won six innings, he threw just 54, well, 77 pitches in a game, 54 strikes, 23 balls. Struck out four, allowed just two hits, and did not walk a batter. So he's on two days rest off a 77-pitch, six-inning performance. And again, that's why he'll be limited today, according to Coach Kevin Fergus, anywhere from 45 to 60 pitches. He won't have the chance to go the distance here. And unless he pulls some miracle and averages about seven pitches an inning, which hey, he's too much of a strikeout pitcher for that to happen. So here we go to begin this elimination game. Four elimination games today. One has already been decided as Valley defeated Bayfield 2 to nothing. It'll be Ty Hanslick, Cesar Mercado, and Peyton Chacon to begin the game. You can follow us on Twitter at KSIR Sports, our 1010 KSIR Sports Facebook page, or go to KSIRsports.com and click on the Faster Connections. Get the uh, picture of the whole baseball field, the whole box score, pitch-by-pitch pitch account of today's game from Butch Butler Field. The winner of this game plays on Friday at either 10, or ch- check that, 12 or 2.30. That'll be the Friday starts. So there'll be two games coming up on Friday. And then two on Saturday as well. And one of those Friday games, well, could be two on Saturday. We'll see. We know one of those Friday's games uh, is an elimination game. There'll be there'll be two on Saturday if the team that is undefeated going into Friday's action loses that game. If the team that... Um, is undefeated wins on Friday. There could be only one game coming up on Saturday. So here we go. Hands look to step in against the right-hander, Nico Guzman, on a very cool morning. And the temperature is not expected to get above 55, 56 degrees in Greeley. But the skies are uh, fairly clear. There's some cloud cover. And the right-handed hitting Ty Hanslick steps in. Game number three for both of these teams in the tournament. One and one to this point, the pitch. And it's a strike with a fastball at the knees. It's 0-1. Jaron Peterson and baby Matos Garcia more than likely would come in and relief the pitch. Bounces that fastball in. The count is level at one ball and one strike. Opening pitch was brought to you by Buildings by Design. The experience to complete your project from start to finish. Get the quality you deserve in your building with Buildings by Design. 1-1. 1-1. One, one. Swung on, grounded right side. Hirschfeld backhands it, and he will step on the bag for the out as the junior first baseman makes the play. One down, and that'll send up Cesar Mercado, very dangerous right-handed hitter. He torched brush in brush on the 17th, as did many others when they scored 21 runs. So these teams in two games combined for 63 runs. The pitch swung on and lifted in the air to center field. It's going to drop for a base hit on the line right in front of Zane Fowl. And that's what Mercado has done against the B-Diggers this season. One on and one out for the number three hitter. Also for the right side, Peyton Chacon. 
400 straight away. And 333 down the lines. 380 in the power alleys. So it's a day of baseball on 10-10. We'll have the Rockies and Phillies at 640. First of a four-game set from Coors. About a two-and-a-half step lead for Metcado. Squaring to bunt, and the breaking ball is upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Valley scored two runs in the... Peyton Chacon. 2-0 to Peyton Chacon, the stretch and the offering. Fastball is low. And we apologize for any interruptions signal-wise in this particular game. Three balls and no strikes. Guzman did not walk a hitter in any of his two previous outings, but in trouble right now behind to Chacon. Fastball is a strike on the inside corner. And the count moves to 3-1. and one. With Carter Chacon, a very dangerous left-handed hitter on deck. Three balls and one strike. Guzman delivers. Swung on and lifted into right center field. Same fouls going way back. Still going back towards the track. And it's over his head. He misjudged it initially. And then he drops the ball around third and scoring. It's going to be Mercado. And two-third is going to be Chacon with the RBI triple. And Valley is in the lead, one to nothing. Although that triple was aided there by Fowles' miscue on two ends. He really misjudged that. We've seen a lot of misjudgings. So here is Carter Chacon. So the bead diggers are in an early hole. And you anticipate this will be an offensive-minded type of game. Here's the wind and pitch. Swung on and lifted foul and out of play off to the left. And the count is at 0-1. With the second run sitting at third base, the offering, and the breaking ball is outside. Levels the count at one ball and one strike to Carter Chacon. Already some fireworks to begin the game for Valley. And the pitch. Breaking ball is up and away. Two balls and one strike. Guzman out of the windup. Way outside with a fastball. Again, he's going to be limited today with his pitch count. He doesn't want to be too limited. If he really struggles here, Bead Diggers will have to pull the plug early. Three balls and one strike. The pitch swung on and lifted foul and out of play again off to the left. Count moves to three and two on Carter Chacon in the top of the first inning. Wine and offering up and away. Chacon has walked. That'll bring up the right-handed hitting Avery Hanslick. Hitting out of the five hole. So a ground out. And then two hard hit balls. A single and a triple along with a walk. And Valley's got a run looking for more. The beat diggers are a double play depth. The stretch by Guzman. And the pitch. Swung on line towards right field. Coming on is Walter. And he dives and he makes the catch. Tagging up at third is Chacon. Check that. Yep, it's Chacon. He will score. And Valley leads two to nothing. On the sack fly by Avery Henslick. Nice play out there by the sliding. Brandon Walter taking a hit away. Here's the opposing pitcher, Sean Chacon, from the right side. Stepping off is Guzman. Hard to shut down this team. They're very, very talented offensively even though they were held to two runs and the appeal at third and safe. Appeal is not overturned there. 
The stretch by Nico. And the offering swung on fouled out of play. No balls and one strike. Here in the top half of the first inning, just underway, but Valley's got two runs already. On a Peyton Chacon RBI triple, then the Hanslick sack fly. And Valley has as many runs in this inning as they did in the first game against Bayfield. Short lead for Carter Chacon. The stretch, and Guzman delivers. Fastball, a strike on the outer half thigh high. It's 0-2. Now keep in mind, when Brush defeated Valley 22-10 on March 19th, Valley led that game 5-1. Then the B-Digger scored 21 of the final 26 runs. The offering, breaking ball is upstairs and outside. Ball one, strike two. Peterson lays down the sign. The stretch setting up on the outside corner. And the pitch. Swung on and fouled to the screen. Count remains at one and two. When you're shopping for new appliances, shop the best appliance store in Fort Morgan. B&B Appliance with a full and complete line of Whirlpool appliances in downtown Fort Morgan. Guzman steps off. And keep in mind, if he's going to be limited here, it could happen over a two or three inning span. He's already thrown 20 pitches in the inning. The pitch. Curveball is up and in. Levels the count at two and two. Then you've got Jaron Peterson and baby Maltos Garcia behind Guzman. He's going to have to really shorten the innings coming up after this one. The pitch swung on and fouled off. That's exactly what Valley wants to do. They want to extend this pitcher as much as possible. Just in the first inning alone. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two in. The stretch. And the pitch swung on in line towards shallow right field. It's going to be caught by the second baseman, Maltos Garcia, on the edge of the grass. And that'll do it here for Valley in the top of the first inning. Two runs on two hits, no errors, and a man left. Let's head to the bottom of the first inning. It's Valley 2. The B-Diggers are coming to bat on 1010 KSOR and KSOR.com. The Bee Digger starting lineup is brought to you by Cargill Beef, committed to feeding the world in a responsible way by reducing environmental impact and improving products and processes. Learn about Cargill's story of commitment at Cargill.com. Batting first is the first baseman, B.J. Hirschfeld. Hitting second, the second baseman, Baby Matos Garcia. Now Kyle Rosenbrock is in the three-hole now. He's the shortstop. Batting fourth is the catcher, Alec Peterson. The pitcher, Nico Guzman, It's fifth. Center fielder Zane Foul bat sixth. The right fielder Brandon Walter at seventh. Mikey Gutierrez, the third baseman, it's eighth. And Grayson Simmons, the left fielder, bats ninth. Defensively, Avery Hanslick at first. Ty Hanslick at second. Carter Chacon's at third. In between them at short is Cesar Mercado. It's Jose Mercado in left. Center fielder is Angelo Garcia. Riley Diedrich in right. Behind the plate is Peyton Chacon. And on the mound is Sean Chacon. Here's Hirschfeld, who had two hits against Peak to Peak in that one-run, ten-inning victory on Friday. This Valley team came in as a 10 seed, lost to the 15 Sterling, but then just eliminated the third seed Bayfield, which went 0-2 in the tournament. Hirschfeld with an open stance from the right side. The pitch, fastball is upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Valley with a 2-0 lead. On an RBI triple from Peyton Chacon and a sack fly from Avery Hanslake. The offering upstairs. Two balls and no strikes. Here's the wind and the 2-0, and that's in the dirt, 3-0. The B-Diggers were in the same position in 2008. They won the first game against Lamar, then lost to Erie, but then won the third game against Bayfield to move on to the semifinals where they lost here to Eaton. It's the only time they've won, lost, won, and lost in that order. 3-0 pitch. That's a fastball for a strike. Just above thigh level, it's 3-1. To the right-handed hitting B.J. Hirschfeld. Chacon turns and delivers. Outside, it's a walk to Hirschfeld. That'll bring up 
Baby Matos Garcia. So now the Bee Diggers trying to muster an early threat. Here in the bottom of the first inning. Yeah, the first game went about an hour and a half. Don't have a feeling they'll come close with this one. At least not based on the way it started. The stretch and pitch way outside. Nice stab over there by the other Chacon. One ball and no strikes. The stretch by Sean Chuck on the pitch. That's a fastball for a strike on the outer half. Count levels at one ball and one strike to the B-Digger second baseman. Arnoldo Maltos Garcia. And the pitch swung on, grounded a second, could be two. Oh, plays it off his body, steps in the bag, throw to first will be late by Ty Hanslick. So the fielder's choice is four unassisted on the ground ball. And there's one down for Kyle Rosenbrock. Now hitting out of the three hole for the first time this season. Rosenbrock homered his freshman year on this field in the state championship game the stretch and the pitch fastball a strike just above the knees down the middle kind of sitting at 0-1 to Kyle Rosenbrock with Arnoldo Matos got see at first got decent speed and a two-step advantage now stretches it out and the pitch swung on line foul up the third base side he was jammed on that one badly the count moves to 0 and 2. 0 and 2 to Rosenbrock. Settles back into the box. Short lead for Baby, the stretch. Now he takes off. Pitch is swung on and lined. Just foul. Oh, he just missed it with Baby running. That more than likely would have been at least first and third, if not second and third. And he had a huge jump. In fact, he, he took off a little bit too early, but got lucky that Chacon did not see him. No balls and two strikes. One out, one on. Bottom of the first inning. The Vikings are in the lead over the beat diggers. Two to nothing. Now Carter Chacon, the third baseman, is all over that third baseline. The stretch. And the offering. Swung on and grounded left side. Going to be a tough play at short. Long throw to first, and Rosenbrock beats it out on a hop. Fielded by Mercado, and the B-Diggers have their first hit here in the bottom of the first. Had no choice but to throw over there at first because the base runner at first, Maltos Garcia, got down the line. And here's Alec Peterson. He's already homered in this state tournament. I came in the fourth inning against Peak to Peak. Looking to get the B-Diggers closer. The stretch and the offering. And that is low. In fact, it bounced in there. One ball and no strikes. To Alec Peterson, the senior catcher. Having an all-state type of season. Seven home runs. And the pitch. Swung on line into left field. That's a base hit. Baby Matos Garcia got a decent jump. He's going to be headed towards the plate. Throws up the third baseline. And scoring is Baby on the RBI single from Alec Peterson. And the B-Diggers draw to within one. It's Valley 2, Brush 1 in the bottom of the first inning. And again, already more offense in this game than in the uh, Valley Bayfield game. Won by Valley 2 to nothing. That'll send up Nico Guzman. Nico's had his struggles in a state tournament, but so have a lot of beat diggers at the plate. But he's been clutched throughout the course of the season. Keep in mind that he led the team in hitting. During the regular season. The stretch and pitch. Fastball is low. One ball and no strikes to Nico Guzman, the number five hitter in the brush lineup. Rosenbrock at second, Peterson at first. 
Long pause and the offering. Swung on in line towards left field. That's going to be trouble. A dive, and it gets by the left fielder, Mercado. Rosenbrock is around third. He will score. Peterson is around third. He's going to step on home plate. To third is Guzman, and the throw will be late. It's a two-run triple for Nico. And the B-Diggers lead 3-2 to two in the bottom of the first inning. And they are tagging Sean Chacon. And that will bring up Zane Foul. Justin Griffith will be the courtesy runner. At third for Nico. Man, this series has been all about offense. When you look at the B Diggers and the Vikings, that's 68 runs combined in two meetings. And here's Zane Fowl. So the B Diggers, just like that, are in the lead. And this. Potent brush offense was held down for a while, but not in this game. The fastball is low. Well, the infield playing in. They want to cut that run off at the plate. One ball and no strikes. The pitch. Fastball down and away. That moves the count to 2-0 and on Zane Fowl. As the senior outfielder steps back in. The stretch and the offering. Swing and a miss and a fastball above the letters. That would have been ball three. He went fishing for that one. Ball two, strike one. With Griffith at third. Stretch by Chacon. And the pitch. Fastball runs inside. Three and one. That's yeah, surprising to me that Valley's playing the infield in. It's an elimination game, but it's only in the first. 3-1 to foul, and he takes it in the dirt. Runners at the corners here for Brandon Walter. The first left-handed hitter in this lineup for the B-Diggers. And now, Valley's at double play depth in the middle. So at third is Griffith. At first is Fowl with a two-step lead. Sean Chacon has given up three hits here in the bottom of the first. A stretch and the pitch and the changeup is off the plate. Taking off for second is Fowl. The throw and he's going to be safe. Boy, he went in standing, and that was not very smart at all. Foul should have slid. He got a break there. That was very careless by Foul. He should have been sliding. He was nearly tagged out. One ball and no strikes. Now the infield is, oh, they're still playing at normal depth, coming in a little bit now. 1-0 pitch. Swung on and fouled off to the left. Count levels at 1-1 one and one to Brandon Walter. With Mikey Gutierrez on deck. 3-2 to two brush over Valley here at the bottom of the first inning. Two runners in scoring position. And the offering. That is a ball. Missed a little bit with that changeup just below the knees. 2-1 and one. Chacon thought he had strike two. No doubt about it. He's about to throw the 25th pitch of the inning for him. 2-1. Low and inside. Looked like a breaking ball that was tailing down around the ankles. Three and one. Walter's got to be sitting on a fastball here. Three balls and one strike. Chacon delivers. Swung on and lifted into shallow left center field. That ball's going to drop for a base hit. Scoring is Griffith. Foul is going to stay at third. And Brandon Walter delivers the bloop single. And the beat diggers now lead Valley four to two. Here's Mikey Gutierrez. Not hit hard, but in a perfect spot by Brandon Walter. Gutierrez with tons of speed. Hard for him to hit into a double play. The stretch and pitch. Swag and a miss. Throw back the first. Walter back in diving. Yeah, Mikey swung at a pitch that was definitely above the letters. 
one and oh on oh and one I should say on Gutierrez. And the offering down and away. And the count levels at one ball and one strike. To the eighth place hitter in this brush lineup, Mikey Gutierrez with foul at third, Walter at first. Chacon delivers. Fastball is low. Took something off it. Two and one. And this will be pitch number 30 for Chacon here in the opening frame. Runners take their leads. And the 2-1 in the dirt. Three balls and one strike. That's 17 balls and only 13 strikes. If he walks Gutierrez, you got Simmons coming up. Then you wonder, is he going to get out of the first inning? 3-1 pitch. That is down and in. It's a walk. And the bases are loaded for Grayson Simmons. And keep in mind, Simmons had two bases clearing doubles. I think one was a triple. He had a seven RBI game against Valley in that 22 to 10 victory. We'll have a visit to the Hill. Let the State Farm Insurance Office of Greg Mullen and Brush help you find the best policy to fit your life, home, auto, life, and health. State Farm Insurance is there for you and your family. Give Greg Mullen a call, 842 4555. So the only out in the inning was a fielder's choice hit by Maltos Garcia. But he later scored. And the B-Diggers have tallied three more since then. And here's a huge at-bat for Simmons. This is a huge batter for the pitcher, Chacon. Because if he cannot get him out, they might have to go to the bullpen early. In a 4-2 to two brush lead in the bottom of the first inning. This is an elimination game in the 3A state tournament. So here is the G-Man hitting for the left side. Critical at-bat for him. The pitch, fastball for a strike down the middle. At the knees, it's 0-1. Good job of Chacon getting ahead of Simmons immediately. Out of the stretch with the bases loaded. Now he'll step out. The stretch. Chacon delivers. Swung on it as a tapper right up the middle towards the second baseman. The plate will be a first in time. Foul's going to score as Hanslick makes the play. It wasn't pretty, but Simmons drove in a run. And the B-Diggers now lead by a score of 5-2 to two as Foul is able to cross home plate. To third is Walter, and to second is Gutierrez. Here's B.J. Hirschfeld. He walked earlier in this frame. The pitch. Swung on line, foul. Got a good piece of the baseball, but way out in front. No balls in one strike. Long pause and the pitch in the dirt. Nice stop there by Chacon. Saved a run. Count levels at one ball and one strike. Hirschfeld awaits. Long pause the pitch. Ball went behind him to the screen. Here comes Walter to the plate, and he's going to score on the wild pitch. And the B-Diggers now lead 6-2. to two. Gutierrez to third. I mean, that had no chance of being caught by Chacon. No chance. That thing was way behind the hitter. And now we're looking at two balls and one strike. Hirschfeld awaits, and the pitch, that's a strike right there on the outer half, with a fastball, count is now sitting at 2-2, two and two. Hirschfeld awaits, and did he swing on the breaking ball, I don't think he went around, looked like he held up, oh they're going to call him out, well he did go around. And that'll do it for the B-Diggers here in the bottom of the first inning. But the B-Diggers score six runs on four hits, no errors, and a man left. Let's head to the second in the 3A state tournament from Greeley. It's Brush 6, Valley 2 on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. It is Brush 6, Valley 2 as we head to the second inning. 
in this three A state tournament. We've already played nearly half an hour of baseball. So we could be in for a two and a half hour, three hour type of game. Obviously, if this pace continues, it'll be Riley Dietrich, Jose Mercado, and Tylan Nash. Here in the top half of the second inning against Nico Guzman, who had a laborious first inning with those 23 pitches. And he might have, geez, I think two, maybe three more innings in him. That's about it. Between the last two outings, he's thrown 100 pitches. Friday through 77 and six innings, and then 23 here in the opening inning. Time to shut down Valley as far as Guzman is concerned, now holding a four-run lead of the B-Diggers. Here's the wind and pitch, and the fastball is upstairs to the right-handed hitter, Diedrich. One ball and no strikes, and the offering. Fastball low, 2-0. and yeah, He's not on his game with his control. There's no question about it. Two balls, no strikes. Guzman delivers. Up and in. 3-0. Guzman already walked a batter in the first. And this is the leadoff hitter. This is the number seven hitter. And he throws the pitch for a strike at the knees with a fastball. Three balls and one strike to Riley Diedrich. Diedrich, Mercado, and Nash here in the second inning. You don't want to get to the top of the lineup anytime soon. The pitch. Swag and a miss through it right by him with a fastball. It's three and two. Three balls and two strikes on the leadoff hitter for Valley here in the second. The pitch swung on grounded foul up the third base side towards the Valley dugout. Valley was the home team against the higher seed Bayfield and their two to nothing victory earlier today. Three two. Up and away, it's a walk to Riley Diedrich to begin the top of the second inning. That'll bring up Jose Mercado. Now does Valley decide to just swing away or play small ball and try to chip away? But you would anticipate that Brush is not going to be limited to six runs today. Short lead at first for Diedrich, the stretch and the pitch. Swung on and popped up on the right side. The first baseman, Hirschfeld, comes in. He's under it and makes the catch. And there's one down. One down in the top half of the second inning. And that'll send up Tylan Nash, another right-handed hitter. Now the B-Diggers want to turn the double play to get out of this inning and prevent... Ty Hanslick from coming up until the third. Decent size lead over at first for Diedrich. The pitch. Swag and a miss on that little cutter. No balls and one strike. Petey lays down the sign. Short lead at first now for Diedrich. And the offering bounces in, but Peterson is able to get a piece of the baseball and Enough to keep the runner at first. Count levels at one and one. Brush with a 6-2 to two lead on the top of the second inning. On just four hits, but they had a big two-run triple from Nico Guzman. The pitch. Swag and a miss of the ball tailing away. Just above belt level, it's one and two. Here to Tylen Nash. Short lead at first once again, and the offering upstairs and outside. Count moves to two balls and two strikes. Nico ready, and the pitch. Swing and a miss, and Nash strikes out on that ball. Tailing away, tailing away, that is two down. And here's Ty Hanslick, who grounded to first in the first. So righty against righty here in the second. Both teams have already batted around. The B-Diggers did that in the first inning. The pitch. That's a strike right there. Belt high. 
Down the middle, it's 0-1. The lead off of first. And the pitch, runner going outside. Peterson throws to second high and headed towards center field. Backed up by foul, though. Yeah, Peterson almost had no business throwing the ball because it was a terrible pitch for him to be able to throw out the runner. So Diedrich steals second. So the count is sitting at one ball, one strike, two down, six to two brush in the top of the second inning in this elimination game from Greeley. The pitch, that's upstairs with a fastball. Count is sitting at two and one. And the pitch, fastball, a strike on the outer half at the knees, and the count levels at two and two to Ty Hanslick. Nico looks back, looks in, the pitch, swinging a pop-up on the changeup. Peterson back towards the screen. He dives, and he could not make the catch. Great effort there by Petey. Nearly came up with a spectacular play. Trying to save that inning for Brush, but could not secure the baseball. Remains at two balls and two strikes. Here to Ty Hanslick. The stretch and pitch down and away with a breaking ball. Three and two. And Mercado's on deck, and he had a base hit his first time up. Three and two on Hanslick. Looking back at second. The pitch. Swing! And a miss and a fastball above the letters. And Nico Guzman gets the job done in the second. No runs, no hits, no errors. And a man left in scoring position. Let's head to the bottom of the second inning. It is Brush 6, Valley 2. You are listening to the 2015 Class 3A State the Bay Diggers lead 6-2 to two going into the bottom of the second inning. Nico Guzman, before he lost you, struck out Ty Hanslick on a 3-2 pitch with a fastball. So a no-run, no-hit inning. Stranding one was Valley. And here is baby Matos Garcia, 0 for 1. Swung on and driven foul up the left field side against Sean Chacon. Here to begin the bottom of the second inning. And the B Diggers with a four-run cushion. But this Valley offense is very good, so it's not too much of a cushion. And that ball bounces in. Count level at one ball and one strike. And you can always follow us on Twitter at KSIR Sports or 1010 KSIR Sports Facebook page. Swung on, that is popped up on the right side. The first baseman, Avery Hanslick in foul territory, makes the catch. And there's one down. One down for Rosenbrock, who singled and scored along with five other B-diggers. There's Rosenbrock stepping in. Wind and pitch. Bounces in with a fastball. One ball and no strikes. Laying down the sign is Chacon. And the offering. That bounces in as well. 2-0. and oh. Two balls and no strikes on Kyle. And the pitch up and in with a fastball. 3-0. and oh. That's 24 balls and 20 strikes here thrown by Chacon. They really struggle with his command. 3-0. That's in the dirt. It's another walk. I believe that's number three. We'll check the totals here momentarily. And here comes Peterson. Peterson had an RBI single, putting the B diggers on the board in the bottom of the first inning. Yeah, for Chacon. That's already his fourth walk. Stretch and pitch, swung on. That is lifted extremely high into left field. Mercado to his right is under it. 
Waits for it. Makes the catch. And there's two down. Back to first is Rosenbrock. Petey had a pitch, but he got under it. Here's Nico Guzman. That almost bails out Chuck Cohen, considering that he just walked a bead digger. Nico from the right side awaits the pitch. Here it is. Ball nearly hit him, took something off it. As he backs away. One ball and no strikes. The stretch. And the runner goes. Down and in. No throw. Rosenbrock had a big jump. 2-0 to Nico Guzman trying to help his own cause. After his two-run triple in the bottom of the first inning, gave Brush the lead. At that time, it was 3-2 to two once he drove him in. 2-0 pitch in the dirt. Scooped up by Peyton Chacon. Three balls and no strikes. Three balls and no strikes. Stretch. Throw back to second. Back in standing there is Rosenbrock. The stretch and the 3-0. And that is a strike. Three balls and one strike. Swung on and popped up into foul territory. Peyton Chacon gives chase and makes the catch. Shy of the fence, and that'll do it for the bead diggers in the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left at second. It's head to the third. It is Brush, six, Valley, two, on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Let's head to the third inning. The bead diggers lead the Valley Vikings in this 3A state tournament. By a score of 6-2. to two. But this will be the heart of the order coming up for Valley here. Cesar Mercado, Peyton Chacon, and Carter Chacon against the right-hander Nico Guzman. Live in your world, learn in ours at Northeastern. For more information about Northeastern or classes available to you, go to njc.edu. So Guzman's got to come up with a clean inning. He hasn't had one yet, although he's definitely better in the second than he was in the first, as was his counterpart, Sean Chacon. The loser of this game is done for the season. The winner will play on Friday and against an opponent to be determined. The one thing we do know, the Bee Diggers advance. They cannot play Eaton on Friday. That's the good news. They don't match up opponents once again until they get to the finals. So the rematches don't take place that early in the tournament. Wind and pitch. Fastball is upstairs. One ball and no strikes. And the offering. Change up is inside. Barely missed. 2-0. and oh. Wine and pitch. That's outside. Can't start that nonsense again. He walked the leadoff hitter in the second and he got away with it, but with the heart of the order coming up. 3-0. and oh, And that is over but low. And it's a four-pitch walk to Cesar Mercado. Got to watch out now with Peyton Chacon, who tripled in a run. Trying to get these Vikings back into the game. The stretch and the pitch. And it's a strike with a breaking ball in the outside corner. No balls and one strike. Stretch by Nico and the pitch. Down and away with another curveball. A lot of cut to that one. The count levels at one and one. When the top half of the third inning, and Brush leads Valley six to two. The pitch, 
And that is a strike with that little cutter on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes to Peyton Chacon. No stretch. Mercado with a nice lead at first. He takes off. Swung on in line on one hop to Rosenbrock. Nice backhand is top. Throws to first for the out. And that was a great play by Rosenbrock. And a ball headed for left center field. And there's one down. It would That might have been a base hit at Rosenbrock. Well, it would have been a base hit, obviously, if the runner had not been taken off. Because it would have been to his left from his natural position. Here's Carter Chacon. Who walked his first time up. Guzman gets the sign from Petey, the stretch, and the offering. That changeup is way outside. One ball and no strikes. The stretch and the pitch. Swung on in line towards right center field. That's going to drop for a base hit in front of Fowl, who gets to the ball very quickly, hits the cutoff. And the third will be Mercado. Ball gets away in the infield. And now Chacon to second. That'll be an, an infield uh, error as well. Oh, you don't want to do that. Could have set up for the double play instead. It's a B digger error. Could give that to Fowler Hirschfeld. Here comes Kevin Fergus out there to talk to his pitcher. After some shaky defense. See what they can solve out there with the B-Diggers up by four runs. But Valley again with the heart of the order is threatening here in the top of the third inning. And this could be one of these games. First to ten runs or 15, you never know. Because both teams needed a minimum of 11 runs to beat each other back in mid-March. Hanslick had a sack fly his first time up. Hanslick out of the windup. Check that Guzman out of the windup to pitch. Swung on that is popped up into shallow center field. Zane Fowl with a long run. Locates it. Makes the catch. The runner's going to not tag. He blops and a perfect throw by Fowl. And there's two down. Yeah, Mercado would have been out by a mile, even with a hesitation. Runners remain at second and third for Sean Chacon, who lined out to the second baseman, Maltos Garcia. Nico might get out of this, but he's got some pitches to make here. Wind and the offering. Swing and a miss on that ball, cutting away. No balls and one strike to Chacon. And the offering swung on grounded foul off the end of the bat. Now you got to watch you don't throw one in the dirt. A lot of these waste pitches turn into wild pitches. No balls and two strikes to Sean Chacon. At third is Mercado. Carter Chacon at second. Nico Guzman gets the sign and now will step off. Here comes Peterson to the hill. Stop, shop, and save in all your grocery needs and snacks for game time enjoyment. Brush Grocery Cart at 1302 West Edison Street in Brush. No balls, two strikes, two outs, two on in the top of the third inning. The B-Diggers with a 6-2 to two lead. Wind and pitch. Fastball is upstairs. Count moves to 1-2. On Sean Chacon, that was pitch number 57. The offering down and away with that curveball. Wanted to get Chacon chasing, did not. It's two and two. Man, this is a key hitter for Guzman, but Valley gets right back into the game with a base hit. 2-2 pitch. Swing! And a miss and a fastball down in the zone. Chacon strikes out, and Nico Guzman gets out of the jam unscathed no runs one hit one error and two men left both in scoring position let's head to the bottom of the third the score brush six valley two at the 3a state tournament from Greeley on 1010 ksir and ksir.com 
Let's hit the bottom of the third inning. The Bee Diggers lead the Valley Vikings 6 to 2 in this elimination game in the 3A state tournament. Yeah, I'm sure that the other game, the first game, has got to I would think it's a final between Gunnison and Peak to Peak. And checking Twitter here and still don't have a final in that particular game because the winner would take on Sterling at 12:30. Of course you can Follow the Sterling Tigers at Locker Talk NECO on Twitter. So here we go. Zane Fowl walked. It's first time up. Against the right hander, Chon Chacon. Swung on, grounded a short. Nice play by Mancalo to his left. Throws to first for the out. All of a sudden. Sean Chacon is getting on a little bit of a roll. One down for Brandon Walter. That ball was hit extremely hard. But Mercado was right there to eliminate the bead digger. Wine and pitch. Swung on. Pop foul out of play. Count is sitting at no balls and one strike on Brandon Walter. And the offering bounces in. Count levels at one and one. Yeah, the question is, does Nico Guzman have a fourth inning left in him? I don't think after the fourth inning he'll be left in the pitch. Fastball is upstairs. Ball two, strike one. Six runs on four hits for the B-Diggers. All that came in the first inning. Two runs on three hits for Valley. The B-Diggers have committed the only error of the game. Fastball is high. Three balls and one strike to Brandon Walter, who drove in a run with a base hit in that six-run first. 3-1 pitch. That is down and in. And for Sean Chacon, he has now issued in the game five walks. Here's Mikey G. He walked his first time up. The bee diggers obviously have had base runners every inning with the struggles Chacon has had on the hill, the stretch, and the offering. Swing and a miss on the off-speed pitch. Took something off of that one big time. Oh, pulled the string. It's 0-1. On Mikey Gutierrez. Walter with a two-step lead. Now extends a little bit more. Peyton Chacon lays down the sign. And the offering. That bounces in and bounces away from Peyton Chacon to second as Walter in the wild pitch. Now the B-Diggers with a runner in scoring position. Again, knowing that the bullpen is going to have to come into this game. you got to score all the runs you can to give the bullpen some cushion. One ball, one strike to Gutierrez. And the offering, and that is low. Two balls and one strike with a G-man on deck. On a very cool Monday afternoon now in Grayley. Waltroff of second. Two balls, one strike. Mikey G awaits the pitch. That is over, but low. Three and one. And the strike zone has been very consistent so far. Three balls and one strike to Gutierrez. Got to watch out at second. Walter's got a big lead. That, it bounces in. Second straight walk issued in the inning by Chacon. Here's the G-man. Simmons grounded out, driving in a run. And looking to get on track here. Like I mentioned, Simmons had seven RBIs in a game against Valley this year and a couple of bases clearing hits. Then he drove in a seventh run. The stretch and the offering up and away with a fastball. 37 balls and 26 strikes for Chacon. Simmons awaits the offering. Up and away again. 2-0. and This might be his last hitter. I just don't see how you keep him out there. He's really struggling with his control. And the B diggers are doing nothing but waiting on the pitches. 2-0. Pitch to Simmons. 
Swing and a miss on a changeup. Out in front, two balls and one strike. Walter off of second, Gutierrez at first. Two and one to the G-man. The pitch, up and away with a fastball, three and one. His off speed is actually working better than his heater. Yeah, Simmons got to wait for a pitch right down the middle because if he doesn't get it, he's better off taking the pitch. Three and one. Now Simmons calls time. Chacon has thrown 66 pitches in two and a third innings, and he's walked six batters. 3-1 pitch. Swung on line towards center field. That's a base hit. Walter got an excellent jump. He's around third, headed towards the plate. It's going to be cut off. It's an RBI single for Grayson Simmons. And the B-Diggers now lead 7-2 to over Valley in the bottom of the third inning. And to second on the play is Gutierrez. And now we'll have a visit to the hill. Let's see if that's going to be it on the mound for Sean Chacon. As the G-man came through with a base hit. You would anticipate a pitching change, but... Yep, and it will be made. So let's take a one-minute break. With the score, Brush 7, Valley 2 in the bottom of the third inning on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Cesar Mercado is the new pitcher for Valley. The Bay Diggers lead 7-2 to in the bottom of the third inning. Grayson Simmons just came through with an RBI single. Looks like Sean Chuck on the starters moving to the outfield, and I think Angelo Garcia might be the shortstop, but let's see. They're all convening on the hill. We'll await the realignment. So we're ready for play as B.J. Hirschfeld will step in. The B-Diggers have runners at first and second. And only one out in this bottom of the third inning. Six walks by Sean Chacon, certainly, or a contributing factor. But again, this Valley offense is very explosive, and I know I've said that before, but it bears repeating. And Angelo Garcia will now go to short. Well, that is the case, and Sean Chacon is in center. That's your official alignment for Valley. Hirschfeld has walked and struck out. The only strikeout by the starting pitcher. Throw back the first and back in diving is Simmons. The stretch. And the pitch. Fastball is upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Mikey G at second. The G-man at first and Grayson Simmons. 1-0. Upstairs and outside. Paige Chacon has had his adventures back there. Feeling, receiving a lot of pitches. Not even close to the strike zone. 2-0. Mercado just trying to do some landscaping on the hill. Valley had a big opportunity, but stranded two in the top of the third inning. The pitch, that's high. Three balls and no strikes. And on deck, you've got baby Maltos Garcia. He's been neutralized today, so he's certainly due. Three to Hirschfeld. That's up and away, and he walks on four pitches. Seventh walk issued by Valley pitching. Here's baby. He's certainly due. He grounded to second his first time up then popped into foul territory his second time and he can break the game wide open here as the infield is playing halfway the pitch fastball is inside and the ball grazed him it actually grazed Matos Garcia on the left forearm so he's hit by a pitch and Mikey G scores, and the Bee Diggers now lead 8-2. to two. Here's Kyle Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock off to a good start, a single and a walk. Batting with a bases loaded, he's officially one for one. The offering, that ball nearly hit him. One ball and no strikes. 
Mercado working the offering. Swung on and grounded a third. Could be two. The throw to the plate for one. And no throw to first. Eliminated at home plate is Grayson Simmons as Chacon makes the play. So that fielder's choice goes 5-2 to two for out number two. And here is Peterson. Peterson, an RBI single, and he popped up. The Bay Diggers have two across in the frame. And the pitch is swung on and popped foul out of play. No balls and one strike on Petey. Six-run cushion for Brush, but, man, what Peterson could do here is major damage if he can drive somebody in. And the offering changeup is in the dirt. And the count levels at one ball and one strike to Petey. The B-Diggers have their eight runs on only five hits. But again, seven walks. The pitch swung on line, and that is foul, way foul. Down the left field line. Peterson behind in the count. At one and two. One ball, two strikes. Hirschfeld at third. Maltos Garcia at second. Rosenbrock at first. Swung on ground at weekly left side. Chacon, the third baseman, has it. Throws to first. And the ball gets away. Misfielded by Hanslick. And two runs are going to score. Looked like a very good throw there from Chacon. It's an error on the first baseman. No RBIs. Hirschfeld and Maltos Garcia cross home plate. The B-Diggers lead 10-2. to two. Well, I don't know what happened there. Hanslick at first. But two runs scoring on a routine grounder. And the air committed by the first baseman. And the B-Diggers have two runners in scoring position. Here's Nico Guzman. Two-run trip when he popped out. Fastball, a strike. No balls and one strike. And the offering. Swung on line down the right field line. That's trouble for a base hit. Rosenbrock is going to score. Peterson around third. He will score. Guzman to second. The throw is going to be late. And he's got four RBIs in the game. Nico with a two-run double. And Brush now leads by a score of 12-2. to two. That's six runs in the first and third innings. Well, the B-Diggers have come to hit today after struggling that category. And Justin Griffith will be the courtesy runner. The bead diggers are having a banner day. Here's Zane Fowles walked and grounded out. As he will now hit. And a lot of two out damage by the bead diggers. Which hurts even more the stretch and the offering. Strike with a fastball in the outer half. No balls and one strike. The pitch is in the dirt, bounces away, and Griffith can't. Uh, Griffith might try to score. He's around third as the ball gets away, not spotted immediately. He's to third. Yeah, that ball got away, and the catcher Chuck Horn didn't know where it was. I thought he was going to try to score. Count is at one ball and one strike. Mercado now out of the stretch. And the pitch low with a fastball. Two balls and one strike. And the offering down and in. Three and one. Yeah, what a struggle it's been in this frame here for the Valley pitching. 3-1 pitch. That is in the dirt. Another walk. That'll bring up Brandon Walter. Mercado's had struggles very similar to what we saw from the starter, Sean Chacon. 
Walter's been on base twice. An RBI single and a walk. He's done his job after not starting in the last game against Eaton. Let's see if Walter can deliver. It's a ball to throw to second, and that ball is off the runner into center field, and here's Griffith to score on the air, and the third is foul. And the B-Diggers now lead 13-2, to two, seven across. Give foul the stolen base, and then a Valley error. Boy, I'm not sure who that was off. I'm going to have to give it probably to the catcher. And now one ball and no strikes. The pitch. Fastball runs inside for a strike. Got the corner. Count levels at one and one. So the B-Diggers have done even better than they did in the first inning. And the offering. Checked his swing on a fastball. The count is at two balls and one strike. Brush has scored 13 unanswered runs. The pitch. Down and away. Ball three, strike one. Boy, you got to feel bad for the Valley pitchers. It's a lonely feeling out there. B-Digger fans won't apologize because they're scoring all the runs. They're benefiting from it. 3-1 pitch. Swung on, popped up into foul territory and out of play. Three and two. To Brandon Walter. And on deck is Mikey Gutierrez. Will he hit in this inning again? Or at least step to the plate? Some B-diggers haven't really hit. They've just stood there and taken the walks. 3-2 to Walter. Low with a changeup. That did miss. And here is Gutierrez. I'm starting to lose track here. I'm going to have to look at my tracker. I think that's either 9 or 10 walks that have been issued. By Valley Pitchers, Gutierrez has walked twice. And a pitch. Fastball for a strike down the middle at the knees. No balls and one strike. And the offering. Curveball is swung on and fouled and headed out of play. Count moves to 0-2. First and third. With two down in the bottom of the third inning. That's right, we're only in the bottom of the third, even though we played for well over an hour. But the B-Diggers have two huge innings in the game. The pitch swung on foul on the ground off the end of the bat. And it remains at 0-2 to Mikey Gutierrez. The B-Diggers have an 11-run lead in the bottom of the third inning. Mercado delivers. Fastball is outside. One ball and two strikes. And the strike zone has been very good. Nothing called off the plate. If it's a strike, it's a strike. If not, it's a ball. Nothing questionable. The offering in the dirt with a breaking ball. Yeah, nine walks have been issued by Valley Pitchers. Two balls, two strikes. Two outs, seven across, and Gutierrez calls time. And you could set up the pitching for Friday. You could definitely take out Nico now. No reason to leave him in there with an 11-run lead. you got to rely on the bullpen, the offering. That is a called strike three on the outer half with a fastball. And Gutierrez strikes out. However, the Brush B Digger scores seven runs on two hits. There were two errors and two men left. Let's head to the top of the fourth inning in Greeley. It's Brush 13, Valley 2. You are listening to the 2015 Class 3A State Baseball Tournament on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Hirschfeld is the new pitcher. As we head to the top of the fourth inning, the B-Diggers hold a a 13-2 lead, and that allows the luxury of sending in Hirschfeld on the mound. Aaron Williams now at first. Nico Guzman is the center fielder Zane Fow now in right. Yeah, we'll see if Brandon Walter now goes to DH because he was very good. Walter got a big RBI single. 
Willow Coffee, Tea and Smoothies, and G-Suites Bakery, your perfect combination. Outstanding stuff there. Open six days a week, 6 a.m., 6 p.m., Monday through Friday, Saturday, 7 until 4, at 921 Edison Street and Brush. Willow Coffee, Tea and Smoothies, and G-Suites Bakery. Now the Valley Vikings trying to figure out what they're going to do here. Once uh, they take the field for the bottom of the fourth inning pitching-wise. They are down 13-2. to two. The B-Diggers have just six hits in the game. But Nico Guzman has a two-run triple and a two-run double, helping his own cause. Now, if the game goes seven innings, he would not be the pitcher of record. If it goes six or less, he's the pitcher of record because he only threw three. That's the way that would work out. And I'm not sure what the delay is for i saw a game ball being thrown in so hirschfeld about to step in against the right hander for brush he'll face riley diedrich jose mercado and tylan nash the seven eight and nine hitters the Bay Diggers were down two to nothing after half an inning and have completely dominated the game since then. Yeah, it is tough to win two games in a row against two different opponents. We've seen that throughout the years of the state tournament. And I'm talking off the uh, consolation side. I'm not talking off the, the winner's bracket side. Winner's bracket, obviously, it's more common. I mean, Eaton, obviously, the number one seed, they did that on Friday. But once you get to the the uh, the loser's bracket, it's not consolation because you still have a chance to win. Once you get to the loser's bracket, that's where the challenges are faced by teams who've got to win two games in one day. And here we go with Diedrich. He walked against Nico Guzman. Hirschfeld delivers. Swung on and popped foul and out of play. It's 0-1. The B-Diggers would play at 12 or 2.30 on Friday as long as they hold this lead. And that would be another elimination game. And the offering. And that change up is low. Count levels at one ball and one strike. Here to the seventh place hitter hitting from the right side. Wine and pitch. Swung on and grounded up the middle. The shortstop, Rosenbrock, charges. Has to play it off his glove. Then Matos Garcia fields it and throws to first. That'll be an error on Rosenbrock. Just took the bad hop. Or the wrong hop, I should say. And the Bay Diggers playing a little bit sloppy in the field. Have now committed two errors themselves. And here's Jose Mercado. And man, you get Valley up there with their heart of the order. They can threaten. They'll need a huge rally. if The Bay Diggers can hold this team to two or three runs in any big inning. That would be a big inning. That would be okay. And now, yeah, we have some issues with the, the mound, and they're getting the rake out. Apparently, Hirschfeld called out the umpire, and there's looks like there might be like a divot or something out there. I'm not sure. So the mound is being taken care of. Meanwhile, let's tell you that you can find out why Morgan Community College is the best choice for your higher education. Visit MCC online at morgancc.edu. Or stop by the campus for a personal advising session there to help you imagine your possibilities, believe in yourself, and achieve your goals. That is Morgan Community College. And an excellent job done here by the ground crew and by the committee here in the press box taking care of everything. Lots of responsibilities from scoring the game to the game balls, making sure things start on time, and getting everybody in line. I mean, that's why this 3A state tournament uh, has worked so well. Yeah, and now they're trying. It looks like they're trying to fill in like a divot. Well, while they work on the mound, let's take a let's take a break. It's Brush 13, Valley 2 in the top of the fourth inning. Nope, we'll keep it right here. Okay, that ended quickly. Quicker than I thought. We'll keep it right here with the B-Diggers up by 11. We're now ready. Oh, B.J. Hirschfeld's going to. Take a practice pitch here, and that would look pretty good, and hopefully that should be good enough. All 
All right, so at first is Diedrich. Nobody out top of the fourth inning. And here's Jose Mercado. And the pitch swung on tap foul behind the plate. Count is sitting. Uh, No balls and one strike. The stretch and the offering. And the curveball is a little bit up and in. And that levels the count. At one and one. Hirschfeld delivers. Swung on and grounded weakly up the middle. That's a base hit off the end of the bat. And now Valley's got a threat going here. First and second. And here comes the nine hole. That's why this game, I'm telling you, I don't care what the score is. Nothing is taken for granted here as Mercado has just delivered a base hit. First and second for Tylen Nash, who struck out his first time up. The pitch, fastball, a strike on the inside corner. No balls and one strike. You still got to get through this game. Easier said than done, even though the B-Diggers lead by a 13-2 count. And the offering in the dirt, blocked by Petey. The count levels at one ball and one strike. Valley scored two in the first. The B-Diggers countered with six in the first and seven more in the third. The pitch in the dirt again with the same pitch. Don't want to fall behind in the count with that. I mean, you got the top of the order coming up next, and I'm telling you, a, a rally would not be a surprise at all. 2-1 offering. Swing and a miss through the fastball right by him at the knees. Yeah, you got to get this hitter. If not, you're, you're setting Valley up for a huge inning. Two balls, two strikes. Two on, nobody out. Hirschfeld delivers. Breaking ball down and away. Wow, I don't know why he's going with that pitch. Meet ahead in the game by this much. Now he's got to go fastball and he's got to throw it in the strike zone. If you walk Nash, the bases are loaded. Swing and a miss and a changeup up at the letters. Oh, a clutch pitch thrown by Hirschfeld. And he strikes out Nash for out number one. That was outstanding. And here's Ty Hanslick who grounded out and struck out. So he's sitting at 0 for 2. Hirschfeld looks back. The runners take their leads. The pitch way outside with a heater. One ball and no strikes. Hanslick's ground out was on the right side to begin the game when Hirschfeld was playing first base, now occupied by Aaron Williams. Valley has just two fewer hits than the B-Diggers do, but 11 fewer runs. 1-0, up and away, took something off of that one. Two balls and no strikes. So Eaton is now playing peak to peak after they defeated Gunnison three to nothing. And now we're going to have a courtesy runner at first. For Valley. And that'll be Jermaine Mendoza. Two balls, no strikes, one out, two on. And the B-Diggers up by 11 at the top of the fourth inning as Mendoza now running at first. We have played an hour and 23 minutes. And hopefully we're more than halfway through the game. The B-Diggers can dictate that with their offense. Got to be up by 10 runs after four and a half innings at the minimum if you're the home team. And the pitch, a strike, took something off of that down the middle. And the count goes to 2-1 and one on Ty Hanslick. At second is Diedrich. Mendoza at first. Hirschfeld delivers. Outside corner. 2-2 two and two again. Looked like he went with a little bit of a changeup. Attacking the strike zone. Two balls, two strikes, two on. The stretch. 
Pitch to Hanslick. Swung on and fouled straight back. Got a piece of the baseball. Your operation deserves the very best when buying a mixer, feeder truck, a pair of the MMI Design Craftsmanship and Service, MMI International. They outperform their competitors hands down, 842-5161. Swung on and driven down the left field line. That's drift foul. Way foul. And it remains a 2-2 two and two to Ty Hanslick. We're in the top half of the fourth inning. Brush 13, Valley 2. But the Vikings are threatening with two on and just one down. No preps and more today because of this baseball game. And we might not have it on Friday. We'll see the stretch. And the pitch. Swung on and fouled off to the right on the off-speed once again. It remains at 2-2 to Ty Hanslick. Bead Diggers at double play depth. Hirschfeld pitches. Swung on and fouled back again. Hirschfeld threw about 60 some odd pitches on Friday, so he's like Guzman operating on short rest with a limited number of pitches in his initial outing and using up pitches. He's got 20 already. Two and two, the stretch. Hanslick awaits the pitch, and here it is. Fastball's way outside. Good take there by Hanslick. Three and two. And on deck is Cesar Mercado. Very dangerous hitter. Hirschfeld stretches. And delivers. Swung on and lifted a left field. Grayson Simmons goes back to his left and makes the catch for the second out. That's a huge out. Considering Mercado could... He could clear the bases with one swing. But he's now up there with two down. Mercado singled and walked, and he scored a run. And the B-Diggers could be in a position that they're only four outs away from wrapping this up. The stretch and the offering. And that's a strike. That little cutter on the outer edge. It's 0-1. Off of second is Riley Diedrich. Jermaine Mendoza at first. Mercado waits the pitch. Hirschfeld delivers. Curveball is popped up in foul territory. Williams, the first baseman, spotting it. Makes the catch. And the B-Diggers get out of that jam in the top of the fourth inning. The Vikings in the inning get a hit. The B-Diggers commit an error. Two men left. To the bottom of the fourth, we go after the break. It's Brush. 13 Valley 2. This is 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Jose Mercado is taken off the hill. New pitcher here for. Or check that Cesar Mercado's off the hill. Now Jose Mercado's the pitcher. So more changes here for Valley as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. And the Brush Bee Diggers lead 13 to 2. Angelo Garcia now in left field. So Valley staring at the end of their season with the way this one is going for them. After they were very impressive, beating Bayfield 2 to nothing. Impressive on the hill with Carter Chacon going the distance. But man, they've issued nine walks. And the Bee Diggers have needed just six hits. They've been some big ones. Nico Guzman. With a two-run triple and a two-run double. So Jose Mercado, right-handed pitcher, the third one used by Valley. Will now be pitching to Grayson Simmons. At an RBI single. Fastball is extremely high. One ball and no strikes. The third game is scheduled to start at 1 o'clock. That'll go off a little bit late. Fastball for a strike on the inner half. One ball and one strike to the G-man. Here's the wine and pitch. Low and away, took something off it. Ball two, strike one. Your one-stop center for home improvement projects. Flooring, paint tools, appliances, and more. That's Ackley Building Center, 1402 Mill Street and Brush. A check swing, but he went around. 
Count to Simmons is two and two. That should be two and two. I think that was a strike. Although that wasn't signaled a strike. That should be a strike. Yeah, there's no doubt that he that he went. Yeah, that's a strike. Yeah, I mean, I guess the home plate umpire didn't see him go through, but it was appealed to first, and it's definitely a swing. Two balls and two strikes. Here's the wine and pitch outside with a fastball. Ball three, strike two. Grounding out was Simmons in his first at bat, so officially he is one for two. And the pitch swung on and popped foul and headed out of play on the left side. We'll see the B diggers can tack on any runs. Because again, you want to save as much pitching as possible, and they could if they hold down Valley, but Valley's got the heart of the order coming up. And can extend the game with just a couple of runs, and the beat diggers do not score in this frame. Three balls and two strikes. The pitch swung on and fouled off to the left. The G-man stays alive. Count remains at three and two. Here's the wine and pitch. Swung on in line towards right field, but right there to make the play for the out is Diedrich, and there's one down. One down for B.J. Hersfeld. He's walked, struck out, and walked. He's 0 for 1. Scored a couple of runs as well. Brush with six runs in the first, seven in the third. Mercado, the right-hander, comes home. That's right down the middle for a strike. No balls and one strike. The pitch. Swung on. That ball is grounded up the middle. Metcalo, the shortstop behind the bag. Sets, throws low. And in time, an excellent play by Cesar Metcalo for the second out of the inning on a ball that was headed for center field. And here's Baby. A fielder's choice, a pop-out. Then he was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. Driving in a run. Check that. Rene Cardenas will now hit. So Rene steps in. Saw him yesterday excited for this game. And I'm sure very excited to get in at bat here. Heading for the right side against Mercado. The wine and pitch. And he takes it upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Hitting in baby spot. Nice job of Coach Fergus getting him in at bat in this game. The pitch right down the middle of the fastball. And the count levels at one and one to Rene Cardenas. And the offering. And that changeup is inside. Two balls and one strike. A little bit of a sloppy game with the two errors by each side. The offering. That's right down the middle for a strike at the knees with a fastball. And the count levels at two and two. And Valley's looking for a one, two, three inning. And the 2-2. Swung on and grounded left side. The shortstop, Mercado, in the hole. Sets, throws, in time, and Cardenas is out. And so are the B-Diggers in the fourth inning. Valley could be down to their final three outs. They need two runs to extend the game as we have played four innings. It's brush 13, Valley 2 on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. John Beltran back in Greeley at Butch Butler Field where the B-Diggers lead the Valley Vikings 13-2 as we head to the top of the fifth inning. And as I mentioned right before the break, Valley needs two runs to extend the game. If not, the B-Diggers will be going home with a final four berth. And we know that on Friday they will play either University or Sterling more than like, if University loses the game against Eaton, I think they'll get University. They cannot play Eaton because they play them earlier in the tournament. Already eliminated were Bayfield, 2 to nothing earlier today by Valley, and Gunnison lost a peak-to-peak 3 nothing. 
Right now, Sterling is about to play an elimination game against Peak to Peak. The pitch and the changeup is in the dirt. One ball and no strikes to Peyton Chacon. He's tripled and grounded out. His triple drove in a run. Wind and offering. Swung on tap foul. Count levels at one and one. Yeah, I think they had the winner of this game playing the winner of the University Eaton game, but they switch it up. In that case, they would switch it up so opponents wouldn't meet again. So the pitch outside. So I think it pretty much undoubtedly appears that the Bee Diggers would play University coming up on Friday. And the 2-1 pitch. Change up down and in. Well, let's take care of business first here. I know I'm a little bit premature, but nobody's looking ahead in that dugout. 3-1 pitch. Swung on and lifted deep to left field. Simmons is way back to the track. It's a home run. Peyton Chacon is homer for Valley. And it's now 13-3 brush in the top of the fifth inning. He sat on that hanger and drilled it. And he's got two extra base hits in the game. And they need one more run. One more run to extend the game to the bottom of the fifth inning. And Carter Chacon steps in. There'll be a conversation on the hill. And I think we've got a pitching change. We'll take it with them. Let us take a 90-second break. Back in 90, Brush 13, Valley 3 in the top of the fifth on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Arnoldo Maltos Garcia is the new pitcher for the Beat Diggers. B.J. Hirschfeld goes to second. We're on the top of the fifth inning after Peyton Chacon homered. B.J. Hirschfeld was taken off the mound. Of course, he's building up that pitch count as well. They want to save his arm. And Carter Chacon will step in against the junior right-hander who's been up and down this season. When he throws strikes, he's good. But that's the question. Can he consistently throw the strikes? Valley still needs just one run to extend the game to the bottom of the fifth inning. With the B-Diggers holding this 10-run lead. So here is Carter Chacon from the left side. Baby ready. Wine and pitch. And the change up is in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. This hitter, Chacon, is so good. I mean, he can crank. Swung on, driven deep to center field. Going back is Guzman still going back, and he reaches out. He can't make the catch. Barely missed his glove. He picks the ball up at the warning track, and it's a double here for Carter Chacon. Well, he just proved why he's that good. He smoked that, and Guzman nearly had it. Went to the deepest part of the park. Avery Hanslick will now hit a sack fly and a pop out. Yeah, you don't start worrying till this team gets to within maybe seven runs, and there's men on base. For now, with a 10 run lead, you still got to play. Throw back the first to appeal, and safe is called. That's one of the harder jobs the umpires have is making sure that a player steps on every bag. Baby out of the stretch. Hanslick awaits the pitch. And here it is. Fastball is up and in. One ball and no strikes. Keep in mind that Brush won during the regular season 22-10 to after losing 21-10. to Now they've combined for 16 runs. The beat diggers have 13 of them. 1-0, swing and a miss, and a ball down in the zone. One ball and one strike. This is the number five hitter in the lineup, 0 for 1 officially with the RBI. Chuck going off of second. And the offering, that ball went behind him. Almost hit the bat. Ball two, strike one. Yeah, the key just to get outs here. Valley's trying to get back into the game. Peyton Chacon off to a good start for Valley with that home run to lead off the inning. Ball two, strike one. 
Peterson lays down the sign. Time is called. Yeah, if you give up, give up another run or two, no harm. But if you go beyond two, then you get to that three or four category. The beat diggers got to worry a little bit and crank up the offense. 2-1 pitch. Ball nearly hit him. Baby slipped off the mound there, too. 3-1. and one. With Sean Chacon on deck. And believe it or not, both teams have exactly the same number of hits. The pitch swung on and driven down the left side. And Simmons to his left is going to have to play it on a hop. And then the ball bounces off his body. Chacon is going to score. The throw to second is going to be offline. And it's now 13 to 4. Here come the Vikings. Scored just a base hit there. Be a straight up double for Avery Hanslick. Here's Sean Chacon who's lined out and struck out. Well, you knew that Valley was going to do something. The stretch. Pitch to Chacon. Fastball is upstairs. One ball and no strikes. And the offering swung on. That is popped up on the right side. The first baseman, Aaron Williams, backs up and makes the catch. That's a big out for Brush. I mean, it was starting to be an issue. One down. Yeah, you got to get the bottom of the order out because they've got too much going on here with the middle of the order. And here's Riley Diedrich, who has walked and reached on an air. He is 0 for 1 in the game. Stretch by Baby. Matos Garcia delivers. Fastball is up and away. One ball and no strikes. Long pause. Looking back the pitch. Swung on that ball. hit on the ground up the middle. Second baseman Hirschfeld tries to backhand it. Cannot. And reaching is going to be Diedrich. Let's see how that scored. That'll be scored a base hit. On a ball that was up the middle. On the ground. Now first and third for Jose Mercado. Mercado popped out and singled. Baby at the belt. Comes home. Swung on and driven into deep right center field. Guzman to his left. Cuts off the gap. Makes the catch. Tagging from third and scoring Valley's fifth run of the game is Hanslick. And it's 13-5, to and Guzman did a great job of getting over there on that one. That looked like that was going to drop, but Guzman played excellent center field. Here's Tylan Nash, who struck out twice. This is the number nine hitter in the lineup, so got to get this guy. The pitch, swag, and I bet the ball tailing away. No balls and one strike. Three across for Valley in the inning. So they put a dent into the brush lead. The pause and the offering, and that bounces in. Nice block. Count sits at one and one to Tylan Nash. Runner takes the lead at first. That is Diedrich. Matos Garcia with a long pause to pitch. Fastball is low. Ball two, strike one. Make Stubbs Gas and Oil your next stop heading out of town. During your visit, you can gas up your vehicle, sit down to lunch, get snacks, and your hunting and fishing licenses. Stubbs Gas and Oil in Wiggins. Nash awaits the 2-1 pitch. Swung on that is popped up in the infield on the right side. Aaron Williams, the first baseman, waits for the ball to descend, and he makes the catch. <laughs> he didn't make it look that easy, but nonetheless, he puts it away, and the inning is over. However, the Valley Vikings score three runs on four hits, no errors, and a man left 
We head to the bottom of the fifth inning in the 3A state tournament. The score, Brush 13, Valley 5 on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. The Bay Diggers need two runs to end the game here in the bottom of the fifth inning, leading Valley 13-5. to Jose Mercado will pitch to Kyle Rosenbrock, who swings and grounds it right back to the mound, and Mercado will toss the first, and there's one down, and Mercado has retired all four Bay Diggers he's faced. Here's Alec Peterson. Bee Diggers cannot afford and mess around offensively, although they've been very good in the odd innings, six in the first and seven in the third, but nothing doing in the second and fourth. Petey is singled in a run. He's popped out and reached on an air. He's one for three in the game. Here's the wine and offering, and that fastball's a strike at the knees. The way Mercado's pitching, I wonder why he wasn't in there earlier, because he's throwing well. Wine and offering, and that bounces in. That levels the count at one ball and one strike. 13 runs on six hits for Brush, five runs on eight hits for Valley. The pitch nearly clipped him around the ankles. It's ball two, strike one. Accidents and illness can strike at any time, day and night, and when they do every second counts. As a level three trauma center, Colorado Plains Medical Center is ready to handle any type of emergency. Fouled off to the right on the 2-1 with a changeup. Petey got stung by that one. It's 2-2. Two and two. Valley scored the first two runs of the game. The B-Diggers tallied the next 13. Now Valley has scored the last three. The pitch. Breaking ball called strike three. On the outside corner, Petey thought it was ball three. Two down, and Mercado's retired all five B-Diggers he's faced so far. And there's Nico Guzman. A two-run triple. He's popped out in a two-run double. Only the second strikeout by Valley pitching, and that fastball's low. So the B-Diggers got to get more outs defensively unless they come up with a two-out, two-run rally, and that's down the middle for a strike. One ball and one strike. Nico ready, and the pitch down and away. Ball two, strike one. And we'll take it to Dave Ramsey following this game. The pitch, swing and a miss. That would have been ball three instead of changeup down in the zone, and Nico waved at it. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The base is empty in the bottom of the fifth inning. And the pitch. And that is a called strike three and a curveball. And the B-Diggers for the second straight inning go down one, two, three as we head to the sixth in the 3A state tournament from Butch Butler Field in Greeley. It's Brush 13, Valley 5 on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. The B-Diggers have a maximum of six outs to get, assuming it just goes seven innings. They do have a 13-5 to lead. Over a very good offensive-minded Valley Viking team. Brush has done their damage, benefiting from nine walks, a couple of errors, but they do have six hits. It'll be the top of the order for Valley. And you wonder if they get too much closer, does Kyle Rosenbrock have an inning left in him? He, of course, went the distance throwing over 100 pitches. But if they need Rosenbrock to close out this game, if Valley happens to rally an inning, that's obviously something that head coach Kevin Fergus does not want to do. He doesn't want Rosenbrock to throw a single pitch. But we'll see if it calls for that. Here is Hanslick, who grounded out, struck out, and popped out, so he's 0 for 3. Wind and pitch, swung on and grounded left side. The shortstop, Rosenbrock, has it. Long throw to first. It's going to be in time. And Rosenbrock retires Hanslick for the first out of the sixth inning. That's a big out. Here's Cesar Mercado, who singled, walked, and popped out. Yeah, because you know the next three hitters are lethal. 
Mercado and the two Chacones. They've done a lot of damage today. Mercado in the first inning. And, of course, he walked. He's been on base twice. Pitch by Baby. Down and away. In fact, it bounces into Peterson. One ball and no strikes. The Vikings have five runs on eight hits. Both teams have committed two errors. And the one out of Mercado. Breaking ball bounces in. Two balls and no strikes. Rominger Jewelry and Gifts, the leader in Northeast Colorado for Diamonds Jewelry, watches and export expert to in-store jewelry repairs at downtown Sterling, fouled down the left side by about 75 feet. Two balls and one strike to Cesar Mercado, the Valley shortstop, who was the number two pitcher in this game for Valley. And like the starter, Chacon, he struggled. The offering to the screen. I don't know what he was throwing there. There could have been three. There could have been two or three right-handed hitters that still would have gone behind the hitters. Three and one. Yeah, that, that pitch was a mess. That looked like it was thrown blindfolded. Three balls and one strike. And the offering. Swung on that is popped out of play off to the right. Three and two. Let's see if Baby can come back and retire the hitter. Three balls, two strikes with one out in the bottom of the fifth inning. A top of the sixth inning, excuse me. The B Diggers lead 13 to 5. Peterson lays down the sign and the pitch swung on and fouled. Nice job of Matos Garcia. He's coming back on this hitter. Remains at 3 and 2. Maltos Garcia's brush is third pitcher of the game. Three balls and two strikes. Wine and offering. Swung on grounded left side. Oh, that takes a huge hop for a base hit into left field. Gutierrez was almost there but took a terrible hop. And it's a base hit for Cesar Mercado. Baby got the ground ball he wanted, not the type of ground ball he wanted. Here is Peyton Chacon. He's tripled, grounded out, and homered. He's driven in two. Now the B-Diggers are looking for the double play. Short lead at first. The stretch. And the long pause. Here is the pitch. And the breaking ball bounces in. One ball and no strikes. The B-Diggers have not had a 1-2-3 inning yet, so, but they lead by eight. Baby delivers. That bounces in. Two balls and no strikes. 2-0 to Peyton Chacon. Looking back at first is Matos Garcia. And the offering. That's low again. 3-0, and and Carter Chacon is on deck, and he can certainly draw this team closer. These are their best hitters coming up right now. There is one down in the top of the sixth inning. 3-0 to Peyton Chacon, the offering. Up and in, it's a walk. First and second, Carter Chacon has not been retired in the game. He's walked, singled, and doubled. And he will now bat against Arnoldo Matos Garcia. And with one swing, he can draw this team to within five runs, a big swing. I'm sure he's aware of that, but they got to chip away. They can't get too greedy. The stretch by Baby. And the pitch outside. One ball and no strikes. That's five consecutive out of the zone. Thrown by Maltos Garcia. 1-0. A little bit low and away with a changeup. Pitching very carefully. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, we started looking ahead. I did. Not anymore. 2-0 pitch. Not even close. Way outside. 
Three and zero with Avery Hanslick on deck. Carter Chacona waits. Here's the three zero. That's a strike with a fastball that ends a string of seven consecutive balls thrown by Maltos Garcia. Three and one. This was the key game because you knew the beat diggers couldn't throw a starter for more than three or four innings. Swing and a miss through the fastball right by him. Three balls and two strikes. Off of second is Mercado. Peyton Chacon at first. Baby gets a sign. And a 3-2 pitch. In the dirt with a changeup. And the bases are loaded for Avery Hanslick. Let's see if we have a visit to the hill whatsoever. Because this is getting dangerous for Brush. Hanslick with a sack fly. He popped out and he doubled. Here comes head coach Kevin Fergus. Visit to the Hill brought to you by State Farm Insurance. 842-4555, Home Auto Life and Health. Give Greg Mullen a call at State Farm Insurance. So a single and a couple of walks have loaded the bases here for Valley. In a game that looked like it was over, but the Vikings are starting to rally. When it comes to livestock feed, you can rely on Colorado Soy to help deal with the nutritional needs of your livestock. Visit coloradosoy.com. And Pete's Farmers Cooperative have been in business since 1915. They're still the small-town company that cares about each of their individual customers. Here's Hanslick. Officially at one for 2 Matos Garcia stretches. And the pitch swung on and fouled off the end of the bat up the first base side. Count is at no balls and one strike. Valley has still not scored a run in the inning, but they're threatening big time. Mercado at third. Peyton Chacon at second. Carter Chacon at first. A one pitch. Curveball is a strike on the inside corner. It is 0 2. Now you got to throw that money pitch, the out pitch. Does Baby have it in his arsenal? That was the best curve he's thrown so far. Don't want to throw a wild pitch either, way ahead of the count. And the 0-2 offering, fastball is just outside. It's a good place to miss for Matos Garcia. Ball one, strike two. 13-5 brush in the top of the sixth inning over the Valley Vikings. And the pitch, low, 2-2, two and two. went with the off-speed again. Two balls, two strikes. The B-Diggers need a maximum of five outs to secure the victory, assuming we only go seven. 2-2 two, two pitch, swung on and grounded up the middle of the shortstop. Rosenbrock plays it off his body, throws to second for the force. A run scores. Oh, he was able to get that deflection right back into his hand. And scoring is Mercado. It's now 13-6. to But again, what you need are outs, and that's what the B-Diggers got there. Just get the out. Here's Sean Chacon. He's lined out, struck out, and popped out. So give Hanslick another RBI. The stretch by Matos Garcia. Throw back to first, and nothing doing there. Again, that's what I mentioned earlier. Just minimize the damage with the run scored. None of these four or five run innings. Keep it at three or less. The pitch swung on line towards right field to his left. It's foul. He dives, and he can't make the catch. It's off his glove, and the ball skips away. One run is in, but that'll be it. And it's now 13-7. to It'll be a base hit for Chacon. Looked like that ball was going to be caught on the dive. Peyton Chacon scored, and hands like the third. Valley has drawn to within six. And you know they're thinking, man, we might get the uh, heart of the order coming up. They scored two in this inning. Here's Riley Diedrich, the stretch, and the offering. 
Swung on and lifted into shallow center field. That's going to be trouble, and it's going to drop for a base hit. Another run scores. Crossing home plate is Diedrich. Uh, checked at it. Hanslick. It is now 13-8. to mm. Here's Jose Mercado out of the eight hole. I'm telling you, might have to bring Rosenbrock in the ninth, in the, in the ninth and the seventh. Let's not let's not talk crazy, John. You might have to do that. Right now, this game is getting way too close for Brush. Up by five. The stretch by Baby and the pitch. Swung on line towards right field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Foul gets the ball in quickly, and the runners will hold. And then the ball skips away, but backing it up is Matos Garcia. That's a great play by Baby. He saved an air and a run. But the bead diggers are up by five here with the bases loaded. As Mercado comes up with his second hit of the game. And stepping to the plate will be, I don't think Nash is going to go out there. No, because he was 0 for 3. Here's Angelo Garcia. Will hit in this spot. Brush was up 13 to 2 going into the fifth inning. Three runs in each of the last three frames here for Valley. And they're right in this game. Keep in mind, Valley almost beat Eaton twice this year. So here we go. This could change the game altogether if Valley draws closer. But I'm telling you, I hopefully you don't have to use Rosenbrock in this inning. But he's got to be good for at least a few pitches. Be nice if the B Diggers can put together runs in the bottom half of the frame. They've been held cold offensively. And the pitch. Fastball is outside. No place to put him. One ball and no strikes. To Angelo Garcia. And the pitch. Fastball, a strike at the knees. Boy, that was close. Barely got that one. Count is level at one and one. Baby looks back. 1-1 pitch. Swung on, grounded right side. And Hirschfeld cannot get it. It's a base hit into right field. One run is in. Here comes Diedrich. He will score. Throw to third. And safe is going to be Mercado. And Valley is to within three runs. Valley has made it a 13 to 10 game. And let's see what what the bead diggers are going to do here. As Valley has scored eight unanswered runs after Brush was up. And it looks like Ryan Fergus will check in. Will come to the plate. Uh, go to the hill, I should say, excuse me. All right, let's take a 1 minute break. Brush 13 Valley 10. On 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Ryan Fergus is now the new pitcher for the Bee Diggers, a sophomore. It's a 13 to 10 lead for Brush, but Valley's put together a huge inning and getting a bunch of back to back to back hits. It was 13 to 6 with two down. Back-to-back RBI singles, and then Angelo Garcia had a two-run single. So here is Ty Hanslick, who was 0 for 4. He grounded out to begin the inning. The stretch by the right-hander, Fergus, the pitch, bounces it in. He can't get nervous out there. Fergus did not pitch well against Denver Signs and Tech Stapleton. Valley is out hitting Brush 13 to 6 in the game. One ball and no strikes. Stretched by Fergus and the offering. Change up is up and in. 2 and 0. Oh. Two and 0. Oh. Boy, could the Bee Diggers lose the lead here? This would be unbelievable if this happened. An 11-run lead at one point. 
and they're only up by three. 2-0 to Hanslick. That's not even close. Way outside, 3-0. and This is a monumental rally that the Vikings are putting together. And they have the go-ahead run on deck. 3-0, and the pitch. Down the middle for a strike, took something off it. V-Diggers need four outs without too many runs scoring here. Ian one, Mercado at third, and Angelo Garcia at first. 3-1 to Hanslick. That is a strike at the knees with a fastball. It's three and two. And now you got to throw the pitch. That money pitch. If not, you. So after the walk there to Hanslick. As we lost you for a second, the bases are loaded, and the go-ahead run is inside the batter's box. Incredible. It was 13-2 going into the fifth inning. Valley could take the lead with a big swing, and that ball skips away from Peterson. Runner towards the plate, the throw to slide in there. Then the ball gets loose in the infield, and another runner will not score, but it's a wild pitch. It's 13-11. to So Mercado comes in on the wild pitch, and now a base hit could tie the game. Garcia third, Hanslick at second. The stretch by Fergus, and the pitch. That's a strike with a changeup. One ball and one strike. The B-Diggers are collapsing right in front of us here. you got to get an out here. If not, Mercado can tie the game or give them the lead, the 1-1. In the dirt, that one skips up the third base side. Two balls and one strike. And in the bottom half of the fifth inning, three of Brush's best hitters were all retired on a ground out and two strikeouts. Two and one to Mercado. Stretch by Fergus, and the pitch. Swung on, grounded weakly up the first base side. That's going to be a tough play. Hirschfeld flips to the pitcher, covering in time for the out. Whew. Holy Mahungus. Wow. However, Valley in the inning puts together a monumental inning, scoring six runs. Well, we'll recap it when we come back. Six runs as they strand two. Let's go to the bottom of the sixth inning. The score, Brush, 13 Valley, 11 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. And the B-Diggers lead 13 to 11. faced a walk and a ground out and another walk wind and pitch in the dirt one ball and one strike again six runs on five hits for valley in the top of the sixth inning to get right back into the game the right hander mercado delivers upstairs with a fastball beat diggers need probably a couple of insurance runs at least if not you got to wonder if Rosenbrock's going to take the hill. And uh, somebody's warming up in the right field bullpen. The pitch down and away. That might be Jaron Peterson out there. Three and one. Yeah, Peterson is warming up. And that fastball is high and foul walks. B-Diggers need a bunch of those now. That's 10 walks issued by Valley Pitching. Because Peterson's going to have to face some really solid hitters here. you got to get Peyton Chacon and Carter Chacon. So you need runs. You need runs right now, especially if you can't go to Rosenbrock. And you're going with Peterson, who can get the job done. In fact, Peterson was the winning pitcher. Jaron Peterson was the winning pitcher that 22-10 victory. There is Ryan Fergus after Zane Fowl has been walked. The stretch. Metcalo delivers, squaring to Bunt, and he pops it foul to the screen. 
No balls and one strike. You can turn over the lineup. That would help as well. Valley has more than double the amount of hits that Brush does. No balls and one strike. The Bay Diggers are clinging to a 13-11 lead. A game that has gone two hours and 17 minutes up to this point. Let's see if Fergus squares to bunt. And he does, and he lays it up the third base side. Chacon Fields throws to first in time. And there's one down. The sacrifice goes 5-3 to three for Ryan Fergus. Okay, so now you've got a runner in scoring position. Yeah, you really do need a run. Two just seems way too little at this point. Here's Monkey G's walked twice and he struck out. The stretch by the right-hander Mercado, the pitch. Swing and a miss, way out in front of the changeup. It's 0-1. This was the game that we were worried about because of the thinness of the pitching staff. The offering up and in with a fastball that levels the count at one ball and one strike. It was 2-0 Valley after half an inning, 6-2 and then 13 to 2 brush 6 2 after the first 13 to 2 after the third it stayed that way till valley scored 3 in the fifth and 6th in the sixth swing and a miss one ball and two strikes through the fastball right by him one and two to Mikey Gutierrez with Zane Fow at second one down in the bottom of the 6th inning and the B diggers up by only two runs the offering curveball is up and away Moves the count to two and two. This offense has scored in only two innings. But they've been huge innings. The pitch. Curveball is upstairs. Looked like it was framed for a strike, but it missed. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes to Mikey Gutierrez. Stretch by Mencal the pitch. Swung on tap, foul behind the plate to the screen. Well, fans are getting their money's worth. They might not have done that in the first game when Valley beat Bayfield only 2 to nothing. It was a good game, but a quick one. This one is an extended affair. The stretch, 3-2 pitch, in the dirt. It's a walk to Gutierrez. Two walks issued in the inning. Here's Grayson Simmons, who's grounded out, singled, and lined out. His single drove in a run. And he now bats for the B-Diggers, a critical at bat for the G-Man. After that huge rally, you figure the B-Diggers have got to answer. And if Jaron Peterson's the one taking the hill, he wants some cushion. The pitch swung on and lifted into deep left center field going way back as chuck going toward the track and it's over his head one run is in gutierrez is rounding third gutierrez will score it's a two-run double for grayson simmons he's got three runs batted in in the game and brush has extended the lead it's 15 to 11 what a huge base hit that was the g-man comes through again B.J. Hirschfeld is 0 for 2. He's walked a couple of times. That's more like it. Now let's see if Brush can extend the rally even more. Mercado stretches. And the pitch. Swung on that ball. It's grounded up the middle. That's a base hit. Grayson Simmons is going to be held up. The throw is going to come all the way to third and nearly sail over the head of Carter Chacon. Man, he had to leap for that one. And now the B-Diggers at first and third with Arnoldo Maltos Garcia at the plate. And he is 0 for 2. But trying to break through another wild scorecard between these teams. Wild. Keep in mind they combined for 63 runs in their first two meetings. And now we'll have a visit to the hill. They finally got to Mercado. And the B-Diggers are looking to tack on more in this crazy game from Butch Butler Field and Greeley. It's an elimination game. And the B-Diggers have led most of the way, but 
are trying to extend what is now a four-run advantage. And Brush has come up here with a couple of big hits after two walks issued by Jose Mercado. And Nico Guzman is no longer the pitcher of record. We'll have to see who that is. That, that could be Baby. We'll have to calculate that. Got to go at least uh, more than half the game. The stretch and the pitch. Fastball is upstairs. One ball and no strikes. For the third consecutive game these teams have played, both teams have scored in double digits. And the 1-0. Swung on and tap foul up the third base side with Hirschfeld taking off. Count levels at one ball and one strike. 11 runs on 13 hits for Valley with two errors. They left nine on base. The B diggers are stranded only four. 15 runs on eight hits, and they've committed two errors. One ball, one strike, one out, two on, and two in. The offering, swing and a miss. The throw to second on a hop is going to be cut off by the second baseman, Hanslick. Stolen base for Hirschfeld. And... What happened here? Not sure what happened there. Hirschfeld's going back to first. Well, I have no idea what happened there. Hirschfeld's back at first. It's one and two. Look, did he not steal second? Now the home plate umpire, the field umpire, are conversing. There's only two umpires in this game. Well, the batter's out. Apparently there was there was batter interference. The batter's going to be called out for batter interference on the th- Yeah, that's a uh That's a batter interference. And there's two down for Kyle Rosenbrock. That is an odd call. Scored offensive interference. Here's the stretch. First and third in the pitch. Fastball is upstairs. So they say Baby impeded the throw by the catcher Chacon. So Hurst fell back at first, and there's two down. That's a big out. Rosenbrock in the game is one for three. Singled his first time up. And the pitch. And he swings and fouls it to the screen off the end of the bat. The count is at one and one. Oh, he had a prime opportunity there to score another run. You can still do it right now. With Brush up by four in the bottom of the sixth, <laughs> sixth inning. Excuse me. Getting a little bit nippy here as well. The stretch. And the one one. Inside fastball. Two and one. Off of third is the G-man. B.J. Hirschfeld at first. The stretch. Mercado, the right-hander. Low with a fastball. Ball three, strike one. And you have both, in fact, three great hitters coming up for Brush and Rosenbrock, Peterson, and Guzman. But one has got to get on for the other, and then it's got to happen again. Three balls and one strike. The stretch. Pitch to Rosenbrock. Swung on and driven down the line. It's going to drift foul. Three and two. Thought he got all of it, but in fact he was well out in front and didn't get all of it at all. Three balls and two strikes. Now Hirschfeld will be taking off with a pitch. Look to the team at Aspen Rehabilitation inside Valley View Villa for your sports rehab, short-term or long-term care needs at 815 Fremont. Call them 867-8261, Valley View Villa. Here we go, three balls, two strikes, two outs of the pitch. Inside with a fastball, and Rosenbrock walks. And the bases are loaded for Petey, who's overdue a little bit. One for four, and he struck out his last time up. He could change the game for the beat diggers right here. Give them a much bigger cushion than they've got right now.
Let's see if Petey can deliver. He's done it all season. And the pitch gets behind the catcher. Oh, Simmons couldn't find it. Could not find it. It went behind the catcher several feet, but he stays put at third. One ball and no strikes on Alec Peterson. At second is Hirschfeld. Rosenbrock at first. Of course, with Simmons at third. With two down in the bottom of the sixth inning, the Bee Diggers lead the Valley Vikings 15 to 11 in this elimination game. The Bee Diggers were up 13 to 2 and nearly blew the entire lead before Ryan Fergus got out of a major jam. The pitch swung on and popped foul out of play. Peterson got underneath that fastball. It's one and one. Looked like actually a changeup. One ball and one strike. Valley will have the three, four, and five hitters coming up in the seven. That's why B-Diggers are trying to add to it right now. The offering swung on that has popped up, and the catcher, uh, check that, the pitcher, Mercado, is going to make the catch. And Petey, one for five today. The B-Diggers do score a couple of runs on two hits, no errors, and the bases were left loaded. We head to the seventh in its brush, 15, Valley 11, on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. The Bee Diggers are three outs away from wrapping up this game over the Valley Vikings, but it's going to be three difficult outs. Ryan Fergus will stay on the hill. Jaron Peterson was warming up, but Ryan Fergus, who got out of the jam, will remain in the game as we move to the top of the seventh inning. And the Bee Diggers are looking to hold on to this four-run lead. Peyton Chacon is the leadoff hitter. He's got an RBI triple, grounded a short, a solo home run, and he walked. He's been on base three times. And for Brush, this is their fourth pitcher of the game. They started with Nico Guzman, went to B.J. Hirschfeld, Arnoldo Matos Garcia, now the sophomore Ryan Fergus. Wine in the pitch, and the breaking ball is a strike on the inner half at 0-1. Fergus, after struggling against Denver Signs and Tech Stapleton, pitched better later in that outing, the pitch. And that's a fastball for a strike belt high. It's 0-2. Now looking to do the same here against Valley. After getting out of the jam, no balls and two strikes. Fergus ready. Wind and offering. Curveball is foul to the screen. Count remains at 0-2. Tough duty here for the sophomore, but he's being called upon to stop the Viking offense, which has scored nine runs in the last two innings. 0-2 in the dirt with a curveball. One ball and two strikes. If Valley does not score, this will be 89 runs combined between these teams in just three games. The pitch. Swing and a miss and a breaking ball. And that is... Out number one as Peyton Chacon goes down swinging. What a pitch thrown by Fergie. One down for Carter Chacon, who's walked, singled, doubled, and walked. He's been on base all four times. He's the lone left-handed hitter for Valley. The pitch and the breaking ball is over but low. One ball and no strikes. Still two big outs to get here. In the top of the seventh inning, and the offering. That's a strike with a changeup on the inside corner. And the count evens at one and one. The wine and offering. Curveball is fouled off the end of the bat up the third base side. It's one and two. Yeah, to not, I don't think there was a consideration of using Rosenbrock today since he threw over 100 pitches on Friday. I'm just throwing it. I was throwing it out there because I didn't know how desperate the B diggers would be. Wind and the one-two. Swung on and lifted down the left field line. Long run for Simmons, and the ball is foul. Simmons had all that territory covered. It stays at one and two. Yeah, Chacon thought he had a base hit, but now he's headed back towards the batter's box. One down, and the base is empty in the top of the seventh inning, and another wild affair between Brush and Valley. The Bee Diggers hold a four-run lead. They've been out hit 13 to 8, but that's not the column that counts. The wind in the one-two pitch. Swing!
swing and a miss on a pitch up and away. He has struck out two of their best hitters. Ryan Fergus has done so to begin the seventh. And there's two down. And here is Avery Hanslick, who is one for three. A sack fly, a pop out. He did double and hit into a fielder's choice. Wind and offering. That's a fastball for a strike at the knees. It's 0 and 1. The B Diggers are one out away from playing on Friday in the final four. The pitch. Curveball is a beauty inside corner. Fergus is on a roll here. No balls and two strikes. Man, he's in a zone right now. Wind and pitch. Low. Man, this would be fairly incredible to strike out the side. He's one pitch away from doing so, not against the 7, 8, 9, but against the 3, 4, and 5 hitters. The wind and the 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He did it on a breaking ball down and in. And the brush bead diggers have won the game over the Valley Vikings 15-11 to to advance to a Final Four game on Friday. Let us take a two-minute break. What a job by Ryan Fergus, who nails down the save. Two minutes here on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. 